Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out thepixellab.net. I'm really excited to share the first ever collaborative plugin at the Pixel Lab. Um, I've collaborated with my buddy AJ Haynes. I actually had the privilege of working with AJ a little while back at an agency. Absolutely awesome dude. Let me introduce you to him really quick. You can check him out at ajhaynes.com. And if we head on over to Google, uh, this is AJ. He's got a nice bashed in eye right here. That's because AJ is legit at BMX. So that's uh, AJ. This is what he does when he's not messing around in cinema. So AJ uh, developed this awesome uh, plugin called Image to Plane. And I'm going to walk you through it really quick. So what is Image to Plane? Uh, basically, if you have a project where you need hundreds of images displayed, sort of like a cover flow, or let's go ahead and pull up uh, one with a bunch of different country flags, there's a lot of projects you're going to run into when you need a lot of images, you know, uh, client logos, um, a field of album covers or app icons. And you're going to need a way to basically bring in a bunch of images and put them on planes and have them resized. And that's what Image to Plane does. Image to Plane is going to save you tons of time bringing in a whole folder full of hundreds of images and automatically resizing them and putting them each on their own texture and on a plane. So let's go ahead and open up Image to Plane plugin here. You can put it on your dock or you can go to Plugins Image to Plane. And this is your interface right here. There's a lot of different options. I'm going to let AJ explain them in a little bit. Um, some things like max plane height, if you want to kind of put a cap on how tall the, uh, the max plane is. Uh, you can put your images straight to an alpha channel. You can also line up your images. So when it brings them in, there's, they're already lined up in a row with a position gap between them. We're going to just go with the default select folder for right now. And I have this folder full of country flags. There's, I think, 223 images in here. And they're not all the same size, or it might be a little bit easier. These are all different sizes. Um, so to bring these all in uh, one by one, obviously, would be ridiculous. So let's go ahead and just open the folder, click Open. And you can see that we're already cooking down here. And automatically, you can see that we have all of these new textures in here. Um, it's going to take a little bit to sort of load all the thumbnail images because there's 223 of them. But if we scroll down here, we have all of these already set up. And now if we look here, we already have um, everything kind of lined up here. Now it's put every single image on its own plane and they're all kind of stacked on top of each other. So now all we have to do is go to MoGraph, add a cloner. And let's take all these different planes. And another nice feature is that it actually names the planes. Uh, so it's not just plane one, plane two, uh, like if you would make a default plane. It actually names them all the, the name of the image, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and drag these into our cloner. And let's go ahead and change our cloner to grid array. And let's go ahead and change this to five by five by five. And let's give this a little bit of room in between all these. 500. So we've got all of our flags on their own plane, and you can see that they're all sized differently. You can see that this one's more rectangular and this one is a little bit more square. So everything's already correctly sized up. Now all we have to do is, you know, put in a random effector. Let's go ahead and put in a random effector. Make sure that our random effector goes in the cloner in the effectors tab. Now we're starting to get a little bit of randomization. And go ahead and kick that up a little bit. We can even add rotation or whatever. Go back to our cloner, go to our object. We can maybe kick that up if we want some more flags. Um, go ahead and space those out even more. And there you go. We have over 200 images brought in, put on planes, resized, and our animation is basically ready to go. So with just a couple clicks, you are already in business. Now, one thing I just want to point out real quick, this is just a little tip, is that if you want to change any parameters of a texture, if you don't want to go into the parameters of each of these individually, all you have to do is highlight all of them. So you might think that it's in edit, you know, or in create or something over here, or if you right click on them, you'll be able to do it. But actually, if you uh, highlight them all, if we go over to our material panel over here, it looks like just one's highlighted, but you'll notice that the texture says multiple values, and right here it says 223 elements are selected. So if we make any property changes here, it's gonna apply to all of them. So if we go to basic, we can actually just check on reflection, and it'll add a reflection tab, and then we can you know add a Fresnel, 
and we can change the uh, parameters or whatever. And then that's going to apply it to every single texture. Uh, it'll take a little while to update, but if we click on this guy, you can see that it has a reflection. Click on another one, it's got reflection. So that's just a really quick tip for if you wanna modify a parameter across all of the different images at the same time. So there you go, that is image to plane. There's a lot of other features in here. Uh, there's different features for if you wanna only bring in images that are you know, they have the extension .jpg or .psd, you can kind of limit um, what's brought in from that folder. Um, there's a bunch of other features and we're actually working on a 2.0 right now with, which is gonna add even more. So if you ever have a project where you need lots of images, please check out Image to Plane. We're gonna price it pretty low so that it's affordable for everybody. Go ahead and grab it, play around with it. It's very intuitive and it's gonna make uh, your projects go a lot faster. I hope that you enjoy it. Please email me if you have any problems with it. Huge thanks to AJ. I'm super pumped to be collaborating with him and we uh, have some plans for some exciting new plugins in the future. So keep your eyes open for for those. Thanks guys for checking out the pixelab.net. I'm going to turn it over to AJ now and he's going to explain some of the extra parameters. Thanks guys. So let's just open up the plugin. It's a little folder with plus sign plane, image to plane. You'll see a few options here that we'll quickly run through, but right off the bat, I'll just show you how it works. So select your folder. Here's a folder with 300 images. You'll see a little progress bar that shows that it's loading the files. And otherwise, you know, you might be wondering why you can't click on stuff because you can't really do anything while the files are loading. So, and already done. 300 files imported. Put on the materials. 300 materials to go with it, and they're all named the name of the file, and also the planes are named the same as well. So you don't have to go through and sort through a bunch of planes called plane one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So, in the in the scene here, we've got them all on top of one another in all different sizes, and we can easily fix that. Um, let's just delete the folder real quick. Go to some of these options. The max plane height will just resize any image above a height you specify. So let's just put in 500. So any plane above 500 gets resized to 500. Anything under will just stay the same size. And we'll also line them up with a gap of 50 between them. And then you can select all the materials and hit Materials to Plane. And you'll also see the progress bar loading again. It should take half the time it did before since all the materials are loaded. And boom, there they all are. So there's 300 images resized and loaded right in your scene. It's a lot of images. <laughs> so what can you do with that? Uh, I'll just show you a few basic uses for it. I mean obviously the uses are obvious I would say. Um, just grab all the files, put them into a cloner and I kinda had the cloner already kinda preset up so you don't have to see me do all that but um, let's just fold the cloner and um, Let's just increase. Uh, by the way, I have the adaptive cloner script put on my cloner right now, which will kind of, if you need to add more rows, it will just do that automatically without you having to go in and set the gap between them. I believe that is by um, Douay, D O W W or D O U W E, I believe. Um, search it; it's a great script. So. Obviously, you could add a random effector to that, crank that up, put the depth quite a ways in there, and there you got your little image fly through. And yeah, that's just one obvious simple use for it. Let me show you a couple others real quick. So here we have an emitter. And let's just say we want we want it a fall scene or, or something like that where we have leaves falling. Um, obviously, it's a pain to kind of import a ton of images of leaves, put them in an alpha channel, put them on a plane, resize the plane, do all that. So let's we don't need these. Well, actually, let's keep the max plane height. Let's put it. Let's say the specular. Add the image to the alpha. Select the folder. Grab the leaves folder. Import. 
should just take a second. There are not too many of them. Okay, so we've got our leaves all imported with alpha channel already built in. So let's just grab all the leaves. By the way, if you middle click the parent or the null here, it will select all the children as well. And you can just deselect the parent, drop it in the emitter, just leave the null, and you've got leaves falling. So let's just grab them and resize them real quick. Obviously you could adjust this, you know, speed maybe a little faster. Maybe a few more objects. Really make it rain. <laughs> so there. You got a little fall scene going on there. Add some well, add some rotation to those. So quick and simple. Um, next scene. Um, let's just say you wanted to import an image sequence of something you already rendered, and why would you do that? You know, get creative. You know, you can make a little flipbook of something you already made, a little flipbook animation. Um, so I have this folder. Oop. I have this folder, an image sequence. It's got something I rendered plus a ton of matte objects. And we don't want to import all that. We just want to import the main image, which is a targa, and all the matte images are JPEGs. So we don't want to import all the matte images. So how do we do that? Um, the extension search right here will let you either add to the default list of extensions, which I will put in the a little note on what extensions are default, or you could subtract from that, saying you. They don't want JPEGs. This could work two ways. So you could say subtract JPEG from the list, or you could say at, uh, only Targa. That way you would get just the, the Targa images. And also, you can add your own image file. If there's something that's not supported by default, you could add it. Like a now, C2R file, I think it is, or CR2 file, I forget what that is. Like a raw file. Um, and if it has an alpha in it, always put capital A after it. That will recognize it as an alpha if you want to load that file into the alpha channel. So otherwise, just use your three lowercase letter extension, TGA, JPEG, just with a sp one space between them. Make sure there's at least a space between them. TIFF, just like that. So in this case, we just want only the targets. So select the folder, image sequence, go. So these are all 1920 by 1080 files. And so you'll see that and I think there's uh, around 250 of them. And it's loading pretty quick, but you know it's a little slower than the last folder just because they're all larger size. And I did resize the planes too, so they should come in nice. So, and this has an alpha channel built in, so Let's just select the children once more, drop them in the cloner, get rid of that, and there they are. Um, let's just up the count, let's see 226 files, so we could do 226 if you wanted to. Let's just keep it at 125 for right now. We got them upside down. Set the transform negative 90. And there you go. Oh, actually, looks kind of cool like that. So just play it, and there you go. You got a little carousel, a little flipbook animation of something you did. It's kind of interesting. Add to Luma. We didn't really go over, but it just adds the image to the Luma channel, Luminous channel as well, and it will disable the color channel, but it will still load the image into the color channel as well. And that is Image to Plane. It's a huge time saver. Basically, any time I'm loading an image to a material, I'm using this thing, whether it, you know it's going onto a plane or not. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>